Hey everyone, my name is Cody. I'm a registered physiotherapist and I practice out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. With this video today, I want to go over the differences between an x-ray, a CT scan, an MRI, and an ultrasound. So these are the four most common images you're going to get from your doctor. I also want to talk about why it's important to know the difference between these four types of images. So to start this off, let's talk about x-rays. And first off, if you guys can uh, hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. And also the YouTube algorithm and makes sure the, the most people get to see this video. Okay, so starting off x-rays, what are they? So x-rays, like the name suggests, uses x-ray radiation to take a picture. Now, we think radiation is bad for us. If we get one or two x-rays, they're not the end of the world for us. Um, if we're constantly getting x-rays, right, we're getting that, all that radiation, that can be bad for us. Just because this radiation doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, depends on the dosage or how often we get them and how many. So x-rays use x-ray radiation to take pictures of our, and this is most important, of our bones. So they're ordered if our doctor you suspect a fracture or a broken bone or a dislocation. So anything affecting our bones. The positive thing about x-rays is they're very quick to have done. We don't have to wait very long. Right? Typically when our doctor says uh, he wants he or she wants us to get an x-ray, you can usually go the same day and get one done, although it does take a few days to get the results. Uh, another positive thing for the x-ray is it's relatively inexpensive on our healthcare systems, and that's why we can get them relatively quickly as well. So they're widespread because they're less expensive as we'll come to talk about uh, an MRI. The con to an x-ray is if we get too many of them, right? because it is radiation, it's bad for our bodies. But again, we'd have to have a lot of x-rays in order for that to be the case. Next thing we wanna talk about is a CT scan. Okay, so CT scan, we usually get those when we're in the hospital for something, like we've been in a car accident or, you know, we have something more serious going on than just, you know, a, a broken finger, something of that uh, magnitude. So with a CT scan, it uses radiation just like an x-ray does, but where an x-ray takes a two-dimensional picture, so we've all seen pictures of x-rays, a CT scan takes slices or images of slices of the bone. So, you know, when a doctor wants to see, um, you know, inside of a bone or the different layers of a bone, they think we have maybe a smaller fracture that's not seen on a typical x-ray that's two-dimensional, they will do a CT scan. So CT scans are sectional pictures of bone, or an x-ray is a two-dimensional picture of bone. So it just depends how specific they want to be or how in-depth they're going to be. Another thing about x-rays and CT scans, because it's usually required or recommended when we suspect a fracture, a dislocation, or broken bone. Um, these are typically after a traumatic incident. So a car accident, uh, you know, we've, we've fallen, or you know, someone has hit us. So after a trauma, that's when we typically get an x-ray or a CT scan. Next up is an ultrasound. So ultrasound, just like the name suggests, it uses ultrasound waves to take the picture. So unlike an x-ray that uses radiation, ultrasound waves are not harmful to us at all. They're used to look at more tendons and ligaments. So x-ray CT scans are bone related, fractures, broken bones. Ultrasounds are more for your tendon or your ligament tears or strains. You know, let's say you're an athlete, you're playing soccer or basketball and you roll your ankle. What happens is we can tear, strain or sprain the tendon or ligament at that joint and we use an ultrasound to verify if we actually do have an injury to a tendon or ligament. Same thing can be said with basketball, right? We know Kobe, Durant, we, we see these basketball players all the time, they tear their Achilles tendon. How do they confirm if that is in fact the diagnosis? Well, they're not going to get an x-ray done because we're talking about Achilles tendon, right? There's no bone involved, right? An x-ray, CT scan, they would do nothing these players go for an ultrasound or an MRI. These are professional athletes, the teams have lots of money um, and they have priority. But for you know the everyday person, we would be sent to get an ultrasound because ultrasound looks at tendons, Achilles tendon and ligaments. Just to summarize what I just said, ultrasounds use ultrasound waves which are not harmful to our bodies 
and they're used to look at tendons and ligaments. You know what soccer, what basketball all have in common, different than uh, fracture, is these are not traumatic. So where we talked with x-rays, it was more trauma-based, right? After a car accident or you got hit with something or you fell, there's trauma. That's what's going to break your bones. These are more non-traumatic injuries. Rolling an ankle, uh, straining your rotator cuff, uh, postural injuries. So ultrasounds are really prescribed after one of these types of injuries. Or what else can happen is you could be prescribed an x-ray and an ultrasound together. Well, why is that? Well, let's take an example of a car accident. You get uh, rear-ended, right? Your neck snaps back and forward, you get a lot of neck pain. Well, it's such a high velocity injury, an accident, a lot of things can occur, right? You don't have to just have one injury, you can have more than one. So your doctor wants to be very certain in what the diagnosis is. So you've had a car accident, you go see your doctor, and to be safe, he orders quite a few tests to be done. He orders x-rays to look at the bones in your neck to see if you've broken anything, but he also orders an ultrasound to look at the soft tissue in your neck. You have tendons and ligaments, lots of them in your neck. He wants to make sure nothing's broken with the x-rays, and he wants to make sure that no tendons or ligaments are strained or sprained with the ultrasound. Pros and cons of an ultrasound. Pros, they're using ultrasound waves. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive as well. If our doctor orders us to have one, we can typically go the same day and have it done, Although like an x-ray, it takes a few days to get the results. Another positive to an ultrasound is if you think of an x-ray, right? You go in, you, you know, you put the lead uh, jacket on and you stand, you know, in that machine and they tell you to be really still, right? You can't move when they take an x-ray. Ultrasound is not like that at all, right? You, you know, you're lying there, they put the ultrasound gel on you, they put the ultrasound uh, machine, um, and they can move your body around when they're taking the picture. That's really beneficial because when we're looking at a tissue, you know, tendon, ligament, muscle, these are, these are tissues that move, right? The injuries we sustain, we were moving during them. So we can recreate kind of the pattern we did or what the function of the tendon and ligament is. We get a really good picture and we can get a really good diagnosis that way. That's a really good pro to the ultrasound. You know, a con to the ultrasound, um, it doesn't give a crystal, as crystal clear picture as an MRI would. So which leads us right into our fourth image, and that's an MRI. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. So magnetic, just like the name suggests, it uses magnetic fields to take this picture. So unlike radiation, unlike ultrasound waves, this uses magnetic fields. So we know magnets, they're safe for us. Right? They don't do any ill effect on our body, so that's a pro to the MRI. Another thing with the MRI is it's very, very clear, crystal clear. And like the CT scan, it can take slices uh, of your body. Okay, so very detailed. Some cons to the MRI is it's very, very expensive to have one done. Just to turn the MRI machine on costs a lot of money. It's a big burden on a healthcare system to have these done. And that's why, at least in Canada, you know, we can wait, you know, several months to years to have an MRI done, depending on what they think our injury is and, uh, you know, how old we are, um, things like that. We're, very, we're triaged. Right, the doctor takes a look at our case, what he thinks uh, our situation is, and based on that, they slot you in terms of how quickly you can get your MRI done. So con to an MRI is, you know, the wait times are, are pretty, pretty long. Um, another con to an MRI is an MRI machine is, uh, is small, at least the, the section that your body has to go into. So you either go head first or feet first. If you're claustrophobic, you're not going to like that at all. Right? An MRI machine, you have to be to be dead still when the picture is being taken. I've had one done personally on my shoulder, and uh, I remember it was late at night, I'm just trying to sleep in there, and uh, the technician told me I had to be more still. And I thought, how can I be any more still than I am? I'm basically passed out in here. If you're claustrophobic and you know you get really nervous and you're gonna be moving, you're gonna be hyperventilating, it's gonna be very hard to have one done, and you know you might not even elect to have one done because of this. There are ways around this. There are There is like a sedative they can give you, the doctor uh, beforehand that can relax you when you go into the uh, MRI machine. Okay, so um, you can definitely still have one done if you are claustrophobic or you're a little worried about the space. What does an MRI look at? So we talked about x-rays that look at our bones. We talked about CT scans, which look at our bones too. We talked about ultrasounds, which look at our, our tendons and our ligaments mainly. An MRI looks at 
tissues in our body that are made up of a lot of water, a lot of fat, uh, very liquid uh, tissues. So, um, what that means is it's very good for looking at our brain, our spinal cord, and the discs in our back. For example, let's say we're working out and we're doing deadlifts or we're doing um, you know, a very heavy exercise that puts a lot of pressure on our low back. And let's say we feel something give out in our low back and we stop suddenly and we have this sharp shooting pain. And it can even go from our back into our butt and down our legs as far as into our feet. Now what's mostly happened here is we have a disc herniation. Well, we know MRIs are very good at looking at the discs in our back. So an MRI prescribed after an injury such as this or where we or our doctor or both of us think a disc injury has occurred, an MRI can confirm, number one, that it happened, and number two, which level of your back is actually injured, which really helps with uh, our treatment approach and the prognosis. Now, where an MRI would be used to look at our spinal cord or our brain are such conditions as you know, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, strokes, okay, so not really our run-of-the-mill everyday, you know, strains and sprains or, you know, uh, broken fingers or toes, right? We're not going to really have MRIs on these things. As a physiotherapist, I just want to mention, um, I have a, a lot of clients that will say a lot of the time, um, I need an MRI or my doctor won't give me an MRI on this. Just remember what imaging does, right, why we have it done. It's really to help with a diagnosis. A physiotherapist, is a licensed professional who assesses you, who diagnoses you, and who treats you. We have learned techniques and theories in that that help us diagnose you without all this imaging done. So 99% of people that come in and through having your history taken, or your name, your age, how did the injury happen, what's your pain like, uh, what are your symptoms you have, what activities you're able to do, we can diagnose you very accurately. 99% of you, right? And we treat you and we get, you know, fantastic results without even having an, the results of an x-ray, an ultrasound, or an MRI. So just because you don't have any imaging done doesn't mean you can't get treatment for whatever you're dealing with. I just wanna make that very clear. Let's say you've had an x-ray and or ultrasound and you have those results. You bring them in and you're one of the people that say, you know, I need an MRI or I haven't got an MRI done. If you bring in an x-ray and ultrasound and it says very clearly on there, you know, you have a supraspinatus or a rotator cuff tear, you have knee arthritis, you have a result there. It's telling you what you have that's an issue. We can treat that. That's perfect. We don't need an MRI. Okay, so don't worry about things like that. If, on the other hand, you've had pain for years, you've had x-rays, ultrasounds done, and it's come back and they're, they're negative. Based on the imaging, the x-rays and ultrasounds, there's nothing the matter. This is where we would want an MRI done, right? We've had all the imaging necessary done to date, minus an MRI. It's found nothing. You've been to a physio before, a chiro before, a massage. You've had all types of treatments, and nothing's getting you better. This is where you would want further imaging, like an MRI, or you'd want to follow up with your doctor again, or you'd want to do another assessment with a physiotherapist. Maybe you were diagnosed wrong in the past. I just want to make that clear, that just because you know, you're not getting an MRI or you know, you're on the wait list for an MRI and you know, it's a year down the road, you can still get very good quality treatment and you might even get 100% better without even having, having an MRI done. So I just want to do a, a quick little summary of what I said, the different types of imaging that we can have done. Number one is an x-ray. Number two is a CT scan. These go together. They use x-ray radiation to take pictures of our bones if a fracture, broken bone, or dislocation um, is suspected. X-rays take a two-dimensional picture, where a CT scan takes slices, slice pictures. A CT scan, because it's taking slices and it's more powerful images, can use more radiation than an X-ray. So if we don't wanna have a lot of X-rays done, we definitely don't wanna have a lot of CT scans done. X-rays, they're pretty quick to get, they're pretty inexpensive, but they only look at our bone. Ultrasounds use ultrasound waves, uh, they're not harmful to our body, so we can have as many of them done as we want. Um, they're very quick to get, so the wait times are not long whatsoever because they're relatively inexpensive. Ultrasounds look at our tendons and our ligaments mostly, so as opposed to x-rays that look at our bone, ultrasounds look at our tendons and our ligaments. X-rays look at bones, fractures, we would 
expect these after a type of trauma, like a fall, car accident, being hit. Ultrasounds look at tendons and ligaments, which is more sports-related injuries, posture-related injuries, or after injuries that didn't involve any type of trauma. Commonly, I'd ask you, how'd you hurt yourself? And you'd say, I really don't know, right? You know, I didn't fall or there wasn't anything I can, um, I can say cause this. This is when you'd want an ultrasound done. And what an MRI does is it looks at the tissues in our body that are made up of a high water or fat content. Things like our brain, spinal cord, or the discs in our back. MRIs use magnetic fields. Magnets, they're very safe for us. They're not gonna cause us any harm. Conditions where we would get an MRI done. Again, if we think about a disc herniation, we think about some type of neurological disorder like multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's disease or something like a stroke. MRIs, they're very expensive. We're often waiting several months to a year to get one done. MRI machines are quite small, so you know, for claustrophobic people or people that can't really sit still in a small area for a long period of time, maybe an MRI is something you don't want to have done, but there are ways around it such as uh, sedatives like I mentioned earlier. Why it's important to distinguish amongst these different imaging is because, number one, we all Google, right? When we get an injury, the first thing we do is we Google that. If we're not going to the hospital or a doctor, is we Google it. This is great. As a healthcare professional, I love this. I love when my clients come in and they already have kind of an inkling towards what they've, uh, what their diagnosis is. So when you Google and you're pretty sure, you know, I think I've, you know, this sounds like I, I think I broke something. When you go to your doctor, you have all this information. So you know to get the best quality of care, you know what these different images are. So when your doctor says, you know what, I'm going to send you for an x-ray, you're going to go, um, do, um, doctor so-and-so, um, what if it, I know it's my shoulder, right, and you're, you know, it could be broken, but what if it's my rotator cuff, or, you know, what if it's a, you know, not the bone, but what if it's a soft tissue structure? Can we also get an ultrasound to rule that out, right? When you go to your doctor, you're a team, right? The healthcare team is not just your doctor, your nurse, your chiropractor, the healthcare team also encompasses you. So the more informed you are, no one is going to advocate for you like yourself, right? Just like in the finance industry, no one cares about your money like you do. Health is the exact same way, right? No one cares about your health as much as you do. So the more knowledge you have going into these situations, you can advocate for yourself better. No, I, just, I don't just want an X-ray. I also want an ultrasound. Let's say you go to your doctor and he says he only wants to give you an ultrasound. You'd go, well, why just an ultrasound? I've fallen. Right? There's been a type of trauma here. I know you can break your bone after a trauma. I'm not saying your doctor is um, going to give you poor care. I'm just telling you, just in case you want to ask for a different type of test or an additional test on top of it. Or at the very least, when your doctor does send you for something, you could say, you know, doctor, I know why you're sending me for an ultrasound. You think my uh, tendon or my ligament's injured, not my bone. It's very cool when, you know, a client or a patient uh, knows this type of information, right? It's very cool. So again, guys, the reason I made this video, go over the differences in the imaging, x-ray, CT scan, MRI, and ultrasound, make you guys a more informed patient to ensure that you get the proper quality of care that you deserve. Please like this video. Please leave a comment below. I try to answer all the comments. Um, if you guys want me to make a video on something more specific or something related to this or something really not related to this, I'm more than happy to try. Like this video, subscribe if you like the videos, and I'll keep them coming. Once again, I'm Cody, registered physiotherapist in Toronto, Ontario, Canada.